This was my very first antique bottle. This is what gave me the bottle bug, and I've had it bad ever since. On this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. It was the very first time I went to an antique shop. I loved looking at all the antique things. The old books, the kitchen utensils, even hairbrushes. I just loved the old relics. Well, once I got looking at the old bottles, I felt the bottle bug bite me, and I've been obsessed ever since. All right, so let's get started. I started this search with the newspapers. I wanted to see if any newspapers wrote up any articles that could be useful. Well, I did find a bunch of ads for Brown's sarsaparilla. And isn't it weird how it's spelled like sarsaparilla? but I've always heard it pronounced sarsaparilla. The first newspaper article I found for it was in Bangor, Maine in 1883. I don't know how long this product ends up being sold for. Here's another one. But the newspaper ads stop in the late 1880s. They advertise all things that it cures and many testimonial ads from all the people it helped. Many of the articles Almost all of them have the name Ara Warren as the proprietor. So I spent many hours researching this Warren guy when an 1885 newspaper article caught my eye and it says, Brown sarsaparilla was made from a formula written by the late William H. Brown. So now I had to change courses and go find out about this guy. After all, it is called Brown sarsaparilla. So, Dr. William Hammond Brown was born in Maine in 1822. I looked back a little ways in his family tree and his family had been in America for over 200 years before he was even born. I found his name listed in a yearbook for Bowdoin College in 1841 and he's listed as a junior. He would have been about 19 years old. 10 years later, we see he gets married to Anne Eliza in 1851. On their marriage record, he's already a practicing physician. It looks like they had two daughters, Anna and Mary. Here's the family in 1870. William is 47 here. They also had a white female domestic servant living in the household. Now, 10 years later in the 1880 census, the girls are moved out no servant, it's just the two of them. William died two years later in 1882 at age 60. There are no records of his tonic anywhere on Ancestry's records. I don't see anything telling the story about how he came up with the tonic. Since his occupation is always listed as a physician, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I think that maybe he never sold this tonic. Maybe he actually did concoct it but he just gave it to patients as they needed it. No record ever listed him as a druggist or a chemist or a manufacturer of patent medicines. The following year after he died, in 1883, we start seeing ads for brown sarsaparilla in the newspapers, sold by Ara Warren. Now, Ara Warren was born in 1852 in Maine, so he's 30 years younger than Dr. Brown. By 1873, we see him in the directory in a partnership with a Robinson, an apothecary. So he's about 20 here. We see he stayed partners with Robinson up until the 1877 directory. After that, it's listed as Ara Warren and Company. So Robinson could still be there. It's just that they added another partner or two. So now what I'm wondering is how did Warren get the recipe for brown sarsaparilla? Did Brown sell it to him? Did Warren know Brown personally, just learned it, and then decided to manufacture it after he died? Did he have permission to manufacture it? I guess he must have because he uses Brown's name. I imagine if Warren was just being malicious and greedy, he could have just used his own name. I was just wondering these things because why did Warren wait till one year after Brown died, you know? Warren was in the business for a good 10 years before Brown died. You see what I'm saying? Why is it being sold after he's dead? 
I wish I could have found a will where I could see what Brown's final wishes were. Maybe Brown willed it to him. So here we see the 1880 census with Ara and his young family. He lists his occupation as a druggist. And here's an 1891 directory. And this is the first time that I see an ancestry record link with Ara Warren and with Brown Sarsaparilla. In 1892, again, it shows Ara Warren and Company, manufacturers of brown sarsaparilla. In 1895, we see Ara Warren listed under two categories, apothecaries and rubber goods. I know from doing these videos that sometimes druggists who are chemists come up with other useful things besides medicines. In 1905, he's listed under spruce gum. Now, I never heard of spruce gum. Spruce gum is a chewing material made from the resin of spruce trees. Spruce resin was chewed by Native Americans. It was also used as an adhesive, and it was used to caulk the seams of canoes. Spruce gum has been used medicinally to heal deep cuts and sores, and for treating coughs and bronchitis. Nowadays, people still chew spruce gum. I actually linked a video on how to make your own spruce chewing gum, if anyone's interested. It was actually pretty interesting. I have a spruce tree in my yard, so one day I might give it a try. Anyways, in 1907, he's listed in apothecary, and in 1909, spruce gum again. So he continues both. The last directory he's listed in is 1921, because that's the year that he dies, at age 69. Now, I have to mention this other guy named Frederick Brown, who also made a sarsaparilla in this town 40 years earlier. His tonic was called F. Brown's Sarsaparilla and Tomato Bitters. I tried looking for a photo of a surviving bottle online, but I couldn't find one. 1840s bottles look much more crude, though, so I'm pretty confident that this is not Frederick Brown's sarsaparilla, that this is William Brown's sarsaparilla. Are these guys related? I don't know. My bottle is a blown tool top. It's a typical sarsaparilla bottle shape. It has sunken panels on all sides, lots of bubbles. It's a beautiful aqua blue. It says brown sarsaparilla on one side and for the kidneys, liver, and blood on the other side. I'm not sure how long this particular product was on the market, but according to when the newspaper ads begin and disappear, I'd say that it was about 1883 till about maybe 1892. I mean, that's when all the records and ads seem to disappear for brown sarsaparilla. This bottle definitely has the characteristics of an 1880s, 1890s bottle. If it was only manufactured for less than 10 years, then this should be a pretty rare bottle, I would think. So up until now, I had never found a story for this bottle, so I'm glad that we were able to dig up a little something for it. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.